Now I'm going to show you how to create an assignment and I'm going to hopefully give it to you straight and as basic as possible, but I will admit that it is definitely more complicated than Google Classroom. So there's only so much I know and hopefully someone can always answer your question if my videos don't help. But the way you create an assignment is you obviously go to assignments, which will then eventually open. And you will see that I already have some things that yours will not. But the first thing is here is groups, which is just essentially categories for the gradebook. So you would have the same categories, AKA groups, as you would in Infinite Campus, or as you probably would have in Google Classroom. So obviously I'm gonna have assignments that have to do with writing, quizzes, other types of assignments, discussion posts. But you will want to do this so that the gradebook is broken up, you know, especially if you weight something differently. Uh, writing assignments are worth more than discussion posts, for example. But how to create an actual assignment, right here, go to assignments. I'm going to title it something, you know, profile project. I can upload anything I want from images, links, videos, embed it so it's right there, or make it a separate thing that opens somewhere else. The default is 25 points, which you could change. It's in this category of writing. The default is to make it out of points. There's this option here that says, essentially, it's a heading at the top that means students will know this doesn't count towards their final grade. Maybe this works for peer review. Like you want them to submit their rough draft. You want to grade it so they can see how many points they might get from it, but it's not going to count towards their final grade. For assigning two, you could obviously presume umption as it goes to everyone in the class, but you could make it a certain student and therefore then only that student's grade book will have the assignment. So that's kind of neat. But you could also then make the due date, which obviously you would want because it's an assignment. And then the last bit of info for dates would be when is it available to and when is it available from type thing. So I could make this assignment, but say it's not available for a month, which means I'm put, making it in July, but it won't appear in their canvas until August. I could also say that it's available until Friday midnight. Now the due date so it tells them when it's supposed to be due, but essentially if they turn it in a day late, it'll be marked as late, but they can still turn it in. Whereas if you say the assignment is only available until Friday midnight, you're saying that after Friday midnight, they can't even attempt to turn it in. It'll come back like error or assignment is closed, SOL kind of thing. So that's how to create an assignment, but now it's for what type of assignment. So for submission type, you have four options. No submission, which means that they would not upload anything. They don't have to type anything. You might do this if it's something where you just want them to remember a due date that's coming. Like, you know, okay, test coming in a week. Don't forget, and now it's marked on the calendar. But really, announcements work just fine for that. Online. Text entry means you want them to type something in. Website means you want them to attach a link. Media recording could be for podcast or video. File uploads, probably the most common. And you have a doc, docx, or shared Google. These are the types I allow. You might allow a Google slide or a PDF or an image, who knows. And then the last time, or second to last is paper, which means that they don't upload anything, but this could be like when the class gets hybrid and we're back in person. And maybe you say that, here's the prompt, but you will turn it in hard copy in class. And then the last one is an external tool. I'm gonna to tell you right now, I've never used it a day in my life. I don't fully understand how to use it. So if you need to use it or want to, hopefully there's someone smarter than me that can explain that to you. But in theory, this is where they would submit it through a third party instead of Canvas. Like you want them to submit their paper to turnitin.com. You'd have a link to Turnitin. You want them to do the quizzes. So here's a link to quizzes. Stuff like that. But 
The issue with it, though, is you have to have access to it through Canvas and the administrators in charge. So if I click find a link, all I have is my Google Drive and videos, which means that maybe I ask them to find me a movie trailer. They could do YouTube, or maybe I ask them to create a video and they use Vimeo, or it's a Google Doc, PDF slide, something like that. I could put in a URL for something not visible, like quizzes or Turnitin, but I don't know really if they would be able to access it. To me, it's just, it goes above my head and it gives me a headache to think. So hopefully someone else can explain if you choose to use this. I think it's making things more complicated and we already have enough complications personally. But then what you would do is now you're done. So you would hit save. But really, you want save and publish so it becomes visible. Oops, so I'm going to just make it an online submission. File upload. Okay, now save and publish. And da, da. Okay, and now that I've created it, I can now add a rubric if I want. So, you know, I could have a rubric that I upload or I could just type it in here rubric for paper, or a quiz, or a PowerPoint, or a presentation, whatever. So add rubric. Now if I've already created rubrics, so you can see here the rubric tab, if you've already made some, you could just do find rubric. And you'll see I've only created one in my class, a generic rubric. So I could use that. Or I could create a new one right here. So you title it maybe, I want to say it's the Presentation, presentation rubrics, because obviously a presentation is different than a generic writing assignment. And then I can keep adding as many criteria as I want. So maybe this one is for, you know, organization. Default is five points. So description of criterion goes here. So edit. Maybe this one is for prompt, as in did they follow the prompt. Maybe it's only a 10-point assignment. So five points for if they follow the prompt, five points for if it's organized. Here's some, you can change how many points. Okay. Really, the only other part of this I've done is right here where you see it says, I'll write freeform comments when assessing students. I like to click that because then what it does is I can then essentially when I'm editing there is type my thoughts for why I gave them three out of five. If we don't do that, would rating is in like, okay, five points if you can do X, Y, and Z, four points if you can do X, Y, and Z, three points if you do X, Y, and Z, the grade scale type rubrics. I'm not really big on those. And then you would hit create and the rubric would be attached. Another thing is if you actually went to rubrics right here, then you could create as many rubrics as you wanted. You could create a writing rubric, a presentation rubric, a PowerPoint rubric, a quiz rubric, and then just inst you make all these rubric templates already, and then you just pick the one you want, which will help you get through grading faster in theory. So that's how to create an assignment with a rubric, or just an assignment in general. So now here's what a finished one would look like. So if I just click, you know, personal writing assignment, which is the one I've already created, at the top you'll see it says, does not count to grades, because I wanted the students to not be stressed about it. It's titled personal writing assignment. I gave them steps. I just literally wrote the prompt right here. So I didn't attach a file for them to fill out, no external tool. I said, you're going to create your own Word or Google Doc, and you're going to put it in comment or edit so that I can leave comments. In theory, I try to make it easy step by step. I then even created a sample for them. So here's a PDF they could open and externally, or here's the embedded document so they could read it right here and now. I made it 25 points. They could either write it in the text, but in theory, it means that they post the link in the text box or they attach a document. When is it due? It's for everybody and I use my generic writing rubric so that they already know. So what is the criteria? What does that mean? 
How many points is it? And that is the completed assignment. So now, if we go to student view, though, so you can see what a student will see. So if I click student view, and now I want to go to the assignment, and I have a personal Ryan assignment. I already tested it out and submitted it, but in theory, this would say submit assignment. And then I would click submit. And if it's text entry, that means I would type whatever I want here. I could embed it. I could upload it. I could go to my Google Drive. It'll work. In theory, my Google Drive will appear. Yes, this is who I want. The students will have to make sure they're in the right drive. They could find a document to upload. Or they could just upload a normal document, like if they saved it on their desktop or it's an image. They will see the rubric, they will see everything, and they will be all good to go. So that is how to create an assignment. I hope this helped.